so I wanted to show you my cattle. And before I did that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the way that I uh, deal with my cows. And one of the things that, um, that is important is having a strategy for uh, making sure that your cows come around when you need them to so that uh, so that you can check on them make sure that they're doing well if they've just calved that you can check on the calves and make sure that they're doing well uh, and also when you have to work your cows which is essentially involves giving them vaccinations or branding them or just checking their general health you have to run them through some cattle pins. Uh, and so first thing you need to make sure you have is a, is a good set of pins. Uh, I had a set of pins that I inherited in the back and we're gonna go back there and I'll show them to you. They were not in great shape and so I ended up having to modify them quite a bit. And so uh, instead of doing a set of pipe pins like I probably should have, a metal pipe, uh, I went ahead and just kept, you know, building on what I had originally. And so you'll see that it's, it, it looks great, but it's probably a little more over-engineered in terms of wood than I, than I probably should have done. And so you need a good set of pins. You also need a way, like I said, to, uh, to get your cows to come to you. And so what a lot of people do out here is they will, um, they will either come in in a truck and they'll honk their horn and the cows get used to seeing or hearing the horn honk and so they'll they'll come running because it's like the ice cream truck when you were a kid if you remember you know when the ice cream truck uh, music was playing you came running right with your with your two dollars or whatever it was that your mom gave you uh so same thing with cows and with other animals it's uh, the pavlovian response that if they hear a certain sound and they associate it with food they're going to come running uh, unless there's a problem and so you can tell very quickly if one doesn't come you know perhaps it's injured or there's some other problem where it got out of your out of your fences so you want to make sure that you have um that you have a machine or some means by which the cows will start associating you delivering food with with a certain sound. And so what I use is my Ranger, and I'm gonna show this here to you. So uh, this, is, this is my Ranger. Uh, so what I have made sure is that uh, my cows know that when I'm driving in this Ranger, uh, just by the sound of it, because it's, it's not electric, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, a diesel, a diesel engine, that when they hear that sound, they know that they're gonna get fed. So I'm gonna show you as we come up on the cows here in a minute, you're gonna see that as we drive up, they will, they will, you know, typically come. And there you can see them over there. Let me open this up. You see how they start running? <laughs> you see how they start running toward the, uh, toward the pins? Those are my pins back there in the back. So back there in the back are my pins. And you can see the cattle. When I stop, they stop. <laughs> they want to know if I'm going to be stopping here or heading all the way there. So uh, when I get over there to the uh, to the corral, we'll, uh, we'll you'll watch and they'll follow me. Okay, now <clears throat> that's what I was talking about when I said that the cows would follow. You can see they're all there. And uh, some of them are hanging outside the fence, as I told you they might because they're still a little skittish. But some of them will come in and eventually when I put the food out, when they know they really are gonna get fed, they'll start coming in. Um, so what I run here is, uh, trying to get away from the sound of the ranger. I let it cool off before I turn it off. I run a breed of cows called uh, Brayfords. And Brayfords are a cross between a Brahma and a Hereford. And a Brahma is that type of cow that you see that has a hump back and it's kind of grayish. And it's a breed that is, um, used to be, uh, uh, it was developed from a breed in India. And the, uh, there's, my, there's my bull right there. <laughs> So it's developed from a breed in India, and the um, uh, the breed is known to be very, very rangy, meaning that uh, 
they will forage for food. They won't go hungry. They'll eat dirt if they have to. And so their, their ears are longer, as you can see. They have a little bit longer ears and, uh, and longer legs. Now, this is not a Brahma bull. This is not a Brahma, but it's a cross. And so that's what I raise. I raise a cross between the Brahma and the Hereford. And the Hereford is uh, a, a reddish uh, cow with a, with a white head. And it's known for being uh, a good mama to its babies. It's also known for having a good temperament. And it's known for being um, for having good meat, actually. So what people did a long time ago is they started doing a lot of crosses to see if they could get the good genetics of the different breeds to, to mix. And so they came up with Brayfords. Uh, so I raise F1s, and the F1 is a, a cross. It's a first generation cross. And what you get is you get this kind of uh, brindling uh, or tiger stripe, they call it. But you can also get what is called a uh, a hosca in Spanish or like a, a, a mottled looking cow. And so you'll see over here that some of these here are, are more mottled looking. And uh, there's still the F1 generation, first generation of, um, uh, of, uh, of a Brayford, but they just look a little different. And I run an Angus bull. Uh, I run an Angus bull, which is this guy right here. I, I run an Angus bull on my cows. And uh, the reason that I do that is uh, that he gives his darker genetics to the calves. So you can see here from all these cows, like even this cow here, you get a darker calf. And, you know, all these calves here, you can see they're all dark. Uh, and some of them have a little bit of white, touch of white in their, on their face. They're called black baldies. You can see there's one there and there's also one over there. But other than that white, other than that white, they are, they are dark. And so when I sell them at auction, which is how I sell mine, I don't sell them with, to other people, you know, individually. I, I, I take them to the auction house uh, in Gonzales usually. And when they're running through the pens, nobody knows anything about them other than the way they look. And so people like the, the, the Angus influence because you've heard of Angus steaks. And when you go to get a steak, they're, they're you know, known for their flavor. They're known for their, uh, their marbling and everything else. And so uh, when they see that influence in a calf, they want to pay a premium for it. So, uh, so I run a, uh, a, you know, a black Angus bull you can see them right there. I run a black Angus bull on my cow, on my uh, cows, and I get those nice chocolatey uh, calves every year. And every year I sell them. I don't keep my calves. Some people will keep their calves and try to uh, breed them back, but to, to my mind, that's a little riskier because you know when you have a cow that you know has produced babies, uh, you know she's not going to struggle to give birth unless there's a real big problem. She's usually not gonna struggle to give birth every year. So your, your calf uh, population will be, will be pretty uh, robust. When you have a, 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 a uh, female that has never given birth, it's called a heifer. And a heifer, if she, if she is impregnated in her first, after her first year of birth, which could happen if you're running a bull out there in your, in your pasture and he impregnates a, a heifer, well, she's never given birth before, and at, at her frame size, she could have a problem. So uh, she can, you know, the baby won't come out, and the mom can die, and the baby can die. So uh, they say you're supposed to wait at least two years to start to breed back your heifers. And I don't have the facility or the time or the energy to separate uh, my, my, my pastures into heifer pastures and, and uh, mature cow pastures. And so I just uh, run mature cows that have already given birth. Uh, in my uh, in my operation, and I actually buy them. Uh, I buy my cows with a calf at their side at auction when I start off, so that I know they're going to have no problem giving birth. But uh, but this is this is the breed that I run. Now the thing about the breed that you should know is, and something that you have to consider when you're trying to find your own breed to to raise, is that they have great characteristics. Right? They've got they're good mamas. They're rangy, they have the long ears, they're good for, for the climate in Texas. Uh, they have long legs so they can travel long distances to find food if they need to. Uh, the, the one thing that, that, that I have that I wish I didn't is that the temperament of the Brahma side, the Brahma influence, is, is not the greatest. They're, they're kind of skittish, they're overprotective, meaning that they'll, they'll charge you if they, if they feel threatened. 
and um, and they're not real easy to get into a corral and and pin them off when you need to work them. You have to almost trick them into it. And uh, also, if there is a four foot fence because they're taller, as you can see, you know, if 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 there's a four foot fence, they'll they'll think that they can jump it, right? That's about four feet. They'll they'll think that they can jump it, and they'll try. And if they're stressed out, they'll they'll barrel through and over a barbed wire fence, no problem. So I actually had to come up with this high fence uh, welded wire for my corral because uh, because of that very problem. I'm just getting you a little pan view of of uh, and that over there, by the way, is is my working pins. But but this corral here, I had to go and spend the money because uh, this welded wire is not cheap. I had to go and spend the money to, to, to over-engineer it so that they wouldn't be, be tempted to jump out. And so, you know, that's, that's just a function of the breed. If I had a, a, a pure Angus breed of cow, I would uh, not have that problem. They're known to be very docile, but they don't take as good a care of their babies uh, as, as the Brayfords do. And you might have some mamas that, you know, just don't, lactate enough or they don't uh, forage enough to, to, to help sustain the babies and the babies look weak and you sell them an auction and they sell for, for pennies on the dollar because you know they're not healthy looking. So long video I just kind of wanted to show you how the cows come to the sound of the, of the ranger and the kind of cows that I'm raising. Uh, there's another pan right there of, of my cows that I'm raising and uh, you know, for me it works. I, I, over time I've, I've learned how to do things to make it work, but it's been a challenge. And so when you're designing your facility and you're coming up with the pin size and pin structure and cattle type and all of that, there's a lot to consider so that you don't make a mistake because a mistake can be a multi-thousand dollar mistake if you have to redo your pins, for example, uh, like, I, like I did because your cows are, are breaking through. So, um, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I train them to come in to the corral and I'll give you a little introduction to my corral and tell you why that's important uh, to me to make sure that they actually come to the spot where I want them to.